Welcome to Mr. Rewatch, your Mr. Robot recap podcast brought to you by a stand-up comedian and a depressive hacker. My name is Aaron. I'm joined by some excellent folks in our virtual recording room today. First, maybe I'll ask my co-host to say hi. <laughs> I'm Devlin. And our excellent producer. And I'm Dave. And we are joined by a very special guest. Can I ask you to introduce yourself to our listeners? I am Martin Wallstrom, and I used to play Tyrell Wellick. <laughs> <laughs> that feels like a sad thing to say. Yeah. Maybe it's just because we've just seen the episode yeah. uh, with some pretty dramatic changes for your character. Indeed. I mean, he's been a cat with nine lives, I think, during these last four seasons. So, you know, it's it's the fourth and final season, and, and I guess... We all knew we all had to go in some way. That's true. And so maybe I'll turn it over to Devlin for our first question uh, from Devlin, who's going to talk a little bit about Ty Tyrell's uh, development. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to thank you again for coming back on the podcast. One of our um, episodes that we had with you in the past was one of our highest rated ones. So I'm really excited for the second chance that we have to see you. So um I was wondering, um, Tyrell has gone from a character who started off as kind of um, unsympathetic to one that we really uh, care for a lot. So I was wondering what you felt like had changed for Tyrell over the four seasons of the show. Well, he he started out as unsympathetic, uh, but I think he just kept on being. And if you if you look at his actions, all of it was like. He killed people. He beat people up. He, um, you know, he did all of those things. But I think all the way from the beginning, like in the second episode, when he asks Elliot to join him in that big Trump Soho meeting room, I, I like the writing, you could almost feel that this guy, they, they wrote it so well that you had to feel sympathy for this guy. And that's been my pleasure for the last four or five years to play someone doing all those things, but still the audience have to feel for him. And I think the development, actually, I think we saw him in two episodes in season one where things were like kicking off. He was on his way of fulfilling his dream and then when he's not accepted for the job everything just goes <laughs> downwards and it just keeps on until episode four season four um so i think i mean the writing of making the audience feel the sympathy it's been the greatest pleasure but it's been a downward spiral almost from the beginning I guess the depth of the character there is one thing that we really appreciate to Tyrell and um, something that has some really good writing and some really good acting behind it. Oh, could you, could you say that again? Uh, yeah, I was saying that um, the depth to Tyrell's character is something that I think people really appreciate and that must take a lot of good writing and good acting yeah. to bring that to the screen. It wasn't that I couldn't hear you. I just wanted to hear it again. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, some sound book. Yeah, I think... I mean, from the beginning, it's been my point of view, which has, has made it a lot easier because I was scared, like after the pilot, when we did, like, what kind of guy is this? Is he like some classic villain? But then when I started looking into the writing and just seeing, and I know there are a lot of people with this Terraliot thing, um this is for Terrell at least it's like an it's it's a sad love story and it made it so much easier to play that look he just wants to be with Elliot and that made it so much so much easier so we've talked about Terrell being a pretty complex character how did playing him challenge you as an actor well a, a big part of the challenge was that it's never like and I guess you can't say it's like an easy day for anyone of the character, like any of the characters in this show, but him constantly chasing uh, the mood changes and the rage is this 
constant like up and down of emotions i think that's the that's that's the trickiest part and to feel that that is grounded and i'll i'll still say that the scene in i can't remember the season must have been two or three in coney island where robot tries to kill Terrell. And it's like a three and a half page scene but it goes from like yeah we made the hack until why are you pointing a gun at me you tried to kill me i found god and then suddenly like that kind of emotionally emotionally up and down uh, i think that has been the the most difficult for sure great thank you dave yeah so uh this season of mr robot takes place at christmas and we were just kind of wondering what are uh what are some more unknown to uh north america swedish christmas traditions oh <laughs> mm, well i guess you heard the song right yes can you tell us what that song is well it's uh it's called jul jul strålande jul which uh, translates to christmas christmas shiny christmas basically and it was so funny because we had the table read and kyle bradstreet uh, one of the writers and also producers who wrote uh, episode four i was just amazed that like wow how do you find this i mean how do you come up with this and we had this one guy an actor he was reading all all the stage direct uh, directions and it was so funny because we came to that scene and it said like uh, robot Elliot and Terrell walking through the snow. Terrell is singing "Yule Yule Strålen de Yule." He was trying to pronounce right. this, um, and finally, it was because they've been, you know, pulling my leg a bit with the Swedish thing. Finally, it sort of got back to them. Um, but yeah, it's a Christmas song, and and it was <laughs> it was so um, it was very special week we had upstate in the snow and me singing all through the nights <laughs> in the forest and Rami and Christian they in the end I they they learned that song too um so yeah to get back to the Swedish Christmas tradi- traditions we have a special ham uh Christmas ham which is very uh very Swedish, and uh, also the Swedish meatballs, of course. And our Christmas Eve is on the 24th. Uh, we don't have, because you call 25th, the, that's Christmas Day, right? Yes. Yeah. So now we have Santa Claus. He comes home uh, on the 24th and he delivers all the packages. And um, yeah, and we have the schnapps, of course. What flavor are the schnapps? Oh, that's different. I mean, it could be some sort of licorice uh, tone. And we have this old Danish uh, schnapps. Um, There are a lot of them. And I mean, you could try (laughs) a couple of them in in one evening. Excellent. Devlin? Um, Yeah, thank you. So... I think that uh, Mr. Robot has always had really impressive visuals and really impressive set design, but that's something that's been um, particularly true for season four and this last episode. So um, I was kind of wondering, what was it like to film the scenes in the woods, which is kind of like an unfamiliar scenario in Mr. Robot? Yeah, it was um, really, I mean, to me, coming from Sweden, it wasn't that bad like yeah sure it was cold and it was a bit snowy but we were actually lucky that we had snow and um we were upstate um for i think it was like four or five days and as you say the set design when rami christian and i just stood there and saw that people they'd been up there for like weeks prior to that and arranging with lightning and 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 um and all that uh, like the way it was set up, it was so, it, everything is so planned and, and the details. And that's what I love about this show and, and what I really am going to miss about it is the attention to detail and the quality that all of these people bring to the set, to the script, to the screen. It's um, It's amazing. So we had a small tent also. Um, the actors with heaters 
and then we sat there. It was like a campfire. It was electrical though. Um, we told stories, and and I I really got to to know Christian and Rami a bit more, and and to see how hilariously funny Christian is. Um, so that was it. Was such a great week, and it was actually I think it was the first time where I actually took a step back and just enjoyed being there and uh, thinking back of the ride this has been the last four or five years just being a part of it and truly enjoying being there so yeah it was it was a really really good time it's always nice when you can be in the moment like that when you're working on a project yeah so that was one moment over four seasons. So I have to be happy about that. Now, I'm going to pivot a little bit and ask you about another project uh, that you've worked on. Um, your film Ashes in the Snow actually has its Canadian premiere in Toronto on November the 12th. And for listeners, we're going to be giving away a pair of tickets to that premiere. I wonder if you could tell us about that movie and the role that you play in it. Yeah. So Ashes in the Snow is... Um, it sets in World War II in Lithuania, and it tells the story about when former Soviet Union, um, they go into Lithuania and they deport um, so many people um, just because of, well, someone was um, uh, against Soviet Union or you had you were a teacher or you had just, you know, for any reason. So we, we follow this young girl called Lena and her family when they are deported. And one of the soldiers arresting her family, he's called Nikolai, and that's that's the part that I play. And he sort of follows them when they get deported um, first into the Altai region in, in Soviet Union and then to up north. And he becomes the camp commander. And even though he has to commit a lot of like a lot of brutal crimes he still has this sense of that he wants to save her they have this connection and so they have this parallel story going through the film and yeah i mean he is in in, in some terms reminds people i guess of terrell um but I think he is less traumatized in the beginning, so to speak. Um, but it's also, it stars uh, Belle Powley, and she's now in the morning show on Apple, their new series. And Peter Franson, he's in Vikings, and James Cosmo from Game of Thrones. So a lot of good actors. It, it's visually very very it's beautiful and it's incredibly dark and um yeah I, I encourage people to go and see it and if they can't see it it's on it's on itunes well that's exciting um i mean as you know canada is an extremely large place so for all of us who are outside of it outside of toronto we'll be able to see it on itunes that's excellent to know dave you've got a follow-up question yeah, I was just wondering if there was a uh, if there's a particular role that you've always dreamed of playing. Well, I from I, I've always been a big Spider Man fan, um, but as I've you know passed thirty five now thirty six, I've sort of seen that train leave. So I don't think there'll be any Spider Man for me. But yeah, from the beginning, I think Spider Man was the big, was my big, dreamy part. That's great. I might not have guessed that. No, I think. Well, see, I'm outside of that whole superhero world. I I would say I I don't understand the stories very well. But Spider Man would be a fun character, quite different than anything you've ever played. Yeah, I hear laughing because uh, also I. I never read any comic books, so I always come up very short in these sorts of topics. Yeah, and, and to be to be fair, I mean, I haven't seen the last Spider-Man film I saw was the one with Andrew Garfield, so I'm not too into it either. Maybe I'm just bitter. 
<laughs> Next question. <laughs> Next question. Let's pivot back to Mr. Robot. So season four, episode four. Now you mentioned the sort of Tyrellite fandom earlier. Mm. I wanted to ask you, what does this episode add to our understanding of the relationship between Tyrell and Elliot? Well, I think most of it, Tyrell finally explains why he has this, like why he sticks to Elliot that much, what it means, what it meant when they met and why he, he got so interested. And to me, just, you know, been, since I've been doing this for a couple of years, it was really nice to see, well, this is the answer. This is what it is. And so I think that brings the most to it. Like, and also, I mean, Elliot, he sort of gives away that he is, he also likes Terrell somewhat. If that was still in the episode. <laughs> Um, so Elliot, it's interesting because there's this very harsh confrontation between you two, but then when Tyrell essentially is going to, you realize he's going to sacrifice himself, Elliot won't let you do that alone. And so I think we do see a bit of reciprocity in that moment. Mm. All right, Devlin, I think you're going to ask a bit more about some of the fandom. Yeah, I was thinking about that during the last question. I think that um, fans of the show can be really interested in some of the characters and the actors behind them. And the Tyrellyet one is one that um, fans have been taking particular interest in ever since the beginning of the series. So I was wondering, um, for an actor who's um, so involved in a fandom that people are so interested in, what's it like for your character and for your actor to be so um, uh, focused on in the public way like that? Well, the funny thing is, I don't know if I'm that involved in it, because I think the only thing I've said is that, well, Terrell, he really likes Elliot. And then I guess people started seeing me as some sort of like captain of this Terrellian ship. <laughs> uh, and I was just, you know, I was just trying to decipher what the character was about. And, and you know, so I think it's, it's, again, it's a big homage to the writing that they managed to write a relationship that interesting and it also a relationship that doesn't give away stuff that easily keeps the audience being interested. And, and of course it's, it's really nice as an actor to have that kind of stuff to work with where you don't necessarily say all the things. Um, so I, I think again, to the writing team, and Sam Esmail, just the way, because we have also Dom Lean and and Grant and White Rose, all these very interesting relationships. People tend to be very, very, um, yeah, interested in. So I wouldn't say I'm I'm the captain of this. I'm just playing a character who is. Uh, obsessed with an, uh, another character. Um, yeah. <laughs> right. I guess you mean. Thank you. Dave? All right. So I'm, I'm kind of like a geography fan. Uh, so I'm going to ask you another question about Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sorry if I pronounced the name of the city wrong, but uh, Broma is the city where the show is most downloaded. Can you tell us anything about it? Oh, it's B R O M M A. Yes. Okay, so that's actually um, it's the district of Stockholm. So is oh. that is that where it's most downloaded? Yes. Jesus, I gotta go there and get some free hot dogs or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, what I can tell about Brahma is um, it's a wealthy part of Stockholm, um, and I guess do you know like the age is it like young young guys i think it's just a number of downloads that we have the information on yeah we oh, wow. we only have so much data so we do know that i think two-thirds of our listeners are guys but i don't have age data mm. well i'd say that the broma is um very wealthy and it's close to one of the airports it's a beautiful place, 
and apparently I have to move there now. <laughs> you've got uh, you've got some fans waiting for you, I think. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So listen, we're only going to keep you for a few more minutes. Um, we thought we wanted to give an opportunity to some of our listeners to put forward some questions. And so we've screened these out because a number of these questions were, will he marry me? Or would he like a private tour of whatever city this listener lives in? So we've kind of, we mm -hmm. kind of stripped those out. Uh, okay. But uh, we have a question from at Tyrelliot Legacy who asks, are you happy with how Tyrell's story developed in season four? Yeah, I think I am because one part of it was like, well, how much further could you take this? Um, and, and finally, I, I think I said that in some other interview that finally he got to do something he, he got to do something well saying good is is almost to simplify things but you know for, for the last couple of seasons he's just it's the downward spiral and finally he could sacrifice himself for something better and to go out like that you know i i couldn't ask for anything better than it and hopefully he'll be remembered in some strange way with like compassion, even though he did a lot of awful things. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with it. You thought it was a fitting end for the character? Yeah. I mean, again, he's had nine lives. It's, it's almost as if he, he could have died anywhere during these last four seasons. So for sure. Yeah. To die in the forest and in the snow during Christmas with Elliot, protecting Elliot. Um, I, I, it's, I, I think it's the best for him. Thank you. Now over to Devlin. Uh, yes, I have a question here that's coming from at Rosemary Memphis. And um, they were asking if you think differently when you're acting in English or in Swedish, or if there's kind of like a different methodology that you have. I wouldn't say that the thinking is different but it's what i discovered acting in, in in another language and and to go back to ashes in the snow that i i do that part in russian um which i don't speak but i sort of i've found that it's nice for me because i've always been pretty shy on stage it's not like it's it's coming naturally for me to just step out and oh i'm an actor i can do anything um I've I've always been somewhat shy and and to be able when I use another language is like taking one step away from from that shyness and walking into a part which is um which is why I love it so much and and I think it's been a big part of why I enjoyed playing trail and and doing other work in English is that it's almost like I become, it's easier to become another person to, to, yeah, to be more frank. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting. It's, it's, sorry, it's interesting to think about it that way. Yeah. Dave? Yeah. So I've got a question here from uh, Links in the Woods. Uh, they wanted to know what your dream job was as a child. Uh, I wanted to be a diver, a uh, scuba diver, because I've always been fascinated by sharks and diving so yeah i diving was my dream profession do you do any diving now i did do scuba diving a couple of years ago i try to do some snorkeling and i love you know the ocean fishing and, and that kind of stuff but i haven't been diving in six or seven years unfortunately i've got a question here from at dom shinoda who asks so our first interview with you, I think, inspired a lot of people to try Jungelvroll. Yeah. They ask, how can you like Jungelvroll? It's literally poison. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I'm, I'm into licorice. So I guess it's, it's the more extreme version of it. Um, I, I can see where Dom Shinoda is coming from. And I'd say maybe you're not the, the licorice type 
Um, so you're, you're pardoned. <laughs> Excellent. Devlin? <laughs> I was also thinking of that candy when you mentioned the um, licorice schnapps earlier. I was thinking of Forrest mm. had to be that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was wondering, this question comes from Sign of Trench, and it's a bit more personal for you yourself as an actor. What's your skincare routine? What? <laughs> My skincare routine. I think that they're thinking of Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. Oh, wow. Um, well, except slapping, slapping my own face. <laughs> um, I guess when I'm on set, there's this, you have hot towels and, and all of that. But to be honest, like shaving every now and, and then is, uh, that's my skincare routine. <laughs> Keep it simple. Yeah. Great. Okay, so we're just about at the end. There's going to be one more from each of us. Over to Dave. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was just wondering if you could uh, speak to the rumors that you've been cast as the reverse Flash. Well, I've I've heard them, and I'm not sure where they're coming from. Um, so I guess for now, they're only rumors, uh, not knowing where they come from. That would be a, an entree into that superhero world we were talking about. Yeah, but it's not Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day. Devlin, do you have one more? Yeah, I do. And um, just because I think this is the last question I'll get to ask you, it comes from um, Tyrellia Ship. And they just ask, how can you be so awesome? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that's... Um... That's a good question. Um, I think we need a special episode for that. Um, <laughs> no, but to to something I really want to say, and and when I when I've seen like we talked about the Torelli thing, and I really want to thank all the people, the fans of this show, and the way they've invested themselves, the way they've been putting out theories on Reddit, on Twitter, uh, supporting the cast, the show making this what it is it's and you know it could sound like a cliche when you say oh the fans they're great but really i mean when we started out the uh, doing the pilot no one knew what this was going to be and then suddenly in the middle of the summer it was the third or most downloaded illegally downloaded show with like breaking bad or game of thrones i'm not saying that a, that's a good thing it's it's just a measure of like how much attention a pretty small show got to start with and how the fans made this grow. So I'm just honored being a part of something that so many people actually pushed for and spread their love. And and I know that a lot of people writes to me on Twitter and I'm, I can't answer everything. And, and, but I just want to say thank you for being so invested and it's, it makes it so much fun to be a part of, really. It's not only like being on the show and, and portraying this, but also that people actually care. It's meant so much. <laughs> thank you. I think that um, we'd all probably like to thank you for your performance and contribution to the show as well. Um, obviously, we've uh, been podcasting it for a bunch, so we're very invested in this ca these characters and kind of dissecting these storylines too. So um, yeah. it's really great to have a series that has such good acting, such good writing, and um, that's so fun to build a community around. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to do our outro, and then I've got one last question. So thank you so much, listeners, for tuning into our podcast. This is Mr. Rewatch. We were joined today by Martin Wallstrom. And Martin, I want to ask you as our last question, could you say bonsoir for us one last time? Of course. Bonsoir, listeners. <laughs>